Well, it was 73 years ago today that nearly 160,000 soldiers and airmen from the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada took part in the greatest amphibious military assault in history. It was called D Day, the D Day invasion, and well, 4,414 4, lost their lives. Now, while chronicling the 40th anniversary of D Day, Tom Brokaw came up with the idea for his 1998 book about the greatest generation any society has ever produced. It also produced the greatest period of American power and prestige. Now, today we don't celebrate the greatness of generation, that generation anymore, and of course we should, but I think there is a longing for that period in American history that occurred in the aftermath, particularly after World War II, and I think one day historians will call it Pax Americana. Unfortunately, it only lasted into the 1960s where it faded as people turned on, turned in, and dropped out while our warriors became enemies at home while returning from Vietnam. Today, in the world of endless selfies and safe spaces, there's little faith America could match the grit and selflessness of the greatest generation. I wish I could say that the critics were wrong. Here to discuss Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. Colonel West, first of all, got to say up front, thank you for your service on this special day. And you too. Appreciate your service, Charles. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Uh, the D-Day, 73 years, it feels like every year it kind of fades, at least from the mainstream, if you will. Do you think that we're up to snuff, that we can sort of recall that if we had to again? Well, it's uh, wonderful to be with you and thinking back to my father who served in the European theater during World War II. And two of the combat divisions I served in during my time in the Army were the 1st and 4th Infantry Divisions. One landed on Omaha Beach, the other one landed in Utah Beach. And on the 6th of June 2002, that was the day I took command of an artillery bat battalion in the 4th Infantry Division. And to have that special day for me to take command of a battalion, but more so to see those World War II veterans that were there on that 58th anniversary, it was very special and it was something that we celebrate. And what I think is different between then and now is not the will of the soldier, the, the man and woman who was willing to make that last full measure of devotion. It's us as a society and it's us as a nation. Because back then we knew what it took to face evil and tyranny. And we have, face, have it facing us today. And we seem to want to obfuscate, dismiss, or deny that it exists. And I think that something has to change about our culture and our society, and maybe our educational systems, so that we still do revere those men and women that made those sacrifices. Some people say this all began, that the sea change began with Vietnam coming into our living rooms and the, the, the ugliness of war being more visible. The, can we trace it to that, or is there something deeper going on here? Well, I think that we have had a healing process. One of the things, my older brother served in Vietnam as a Marine infantryman. We continue to say welcome home to them, and that's very important because that's something they did not hear. And when we look at this current generation that's taking the field, they're volunteering to go out and stand on freedom's ramparts, and I think that's something very special. And history may look back upon them and rate them also as a great generation that is facing a clear and present danger. But I think that it's something that when we look at how do we talk to our children and grandchildren, how do we remind them of what happened? If you remember that opening scene from the film Saving Private Ryan, I think that that's something today that every American should watch and so that they will never forget those men and women. And we're starting to lose you know, even more of that generation. So when we have those honor flights that go to Washington, D.C., it's very special for them.